I'm here to tell you, you choose your path, that is fine, but you do not ever again have to experience a dark night of the soul to achieve enlightenment. Welcome back to One's Journey of Unwinding the Mind and of course your daily microdose. Now tune in to the latest episode of One's Journey. Today I'm going to talk about something that came up over the last week when I've been on social media and it's the dark night of the soul and it's the thought or the idea that we need to go back to the darkness, sit in it, feel it, move through it, and only then can we get to a new stage of whatever may be, healing, spiritual enlightenment, awakening. And that's not true. That is the furthest from the truth. A dark night of the soul is not a part of the Holy Spirit's plan at all. It is 100% the ego. Reality is that the ego's belief system still has a basis of the truth, meaning it, it molds its own belief system to fit what we know to be truth in our subconscious. Otherwise, we would immediately be like, none of this makes any sense at all. There's aspects of it that contain the truth we know deep down inside, but with the ego's lens on it, the ego's belief system. Dark night of the soul, and I remember this a couple years ago, I saw it as this badge of honor. When I was going through a dark night of the soul, it was time to write some really deep, moody content and show the world that I've gone to the darkest places, so now I must be in the brightest light. And I used to believe that the darker the darkness, the lighter the light will be on the other side. And yeah, that may be true, but it is not necessary. What is meant to happen and what the Holy Spirit script is, and if you stand in that, is to stand in the light. And yes, the darkness will come, but you continue to choose to stand in the light. You continue to choose to stand in the love. And when you choose to sit in the dark night of the soul and feel it, what you've done is you've turned your head from the Holy Spirit and Jesus. You fully turned your head to the ego belief system, to the ego script of pain and suffering and separation. And it breaks my heart because the spiritual community has decided that dark nights of the soul are badges of honor and necessary steps. And the people who have had the darkest nights of the soul are the brightest of the bright, which is not necessary. It is not meant to be part of the script. You are meant to literally stand in the light and stand in the love. And as you continue to stand in it, as the darkness tries to come forward, you don't even acknowledge it because you're in the light. You don't need to acknowledge it. And I'm not saying that shitty things don't happen in your life. Shitty things happen. But when you play into them and you dig deeper into them and you put all of your weight on them and you feel the deep depths of that emotion thinking that's what's going to get you through and that's the only way to get to this next stage, that is when you have turned your head from the Holy Spirit and from Jesus and you are now 100% with the ego, riding the ego wave and experiencing the most pain and suffering you can. Instead, what is meant to happen is, let's say, I think a lot of times dark nights of the soul that aren't sought out, because that's another piece. In the spiritual realm, we're seeking them out. We are seeking creating dark nights of the soul through plant medicine, through pushing ourselves to the edge, through talk therapy type coaching to dig deep, to relive past traumas in our life. I can't remember what it's called, but it's a type of therapy where, it, oh, exposure therapy, I believe, where you literally relive, let's say you were sexually abused over and over again in your head until the weight, the feelings are removed from it. So what we're doing is saying you need to suffer over and over and over and over again. And only through the suffering will you get to the light. Will you get to the healing and the no more pain and no more hurt. 
And it goes with the statement of you must go through hell to get to heaven. That's not the case. You are in heaven. You just are sleeping. You, you are in this illusion, but you truly are in heaven. You believe you're in this illusion. You're dreaming you're in this illusion. If you stand in the light, you're standing in your truth. You're standing in where you are instead of feeding yourself into the illusion. And for some reason, well, I know what reason, the ego puts its script on everything and of course makes it look shiny and beautiful, even though it's painful because what looks beautiful on the other side is the ability to say, I went through all these dark times. That's why I'm in the light and I needed to suffer to feel the light, but you don't. I'm here to tell you, you don't. I recently had a client who hired me and she had experienced major trauma at the birth of, uh, of her child. She was supposed to possibly die as well as possibly her child. It was a very traumatic time for her and her husband. And also she didn't remember much of her childhood. She knew me from previous and she came to me and she said, Ashley, I know you do inner child work. I need to remember my childhood so I can know who I am and I need to go back to the birth of my daughter and heal that moment. And I said to her, I said, no, we're not doing that. We are going to stand in the here and now, shine our light, address the darkness that comes up in the moment with the light we're standing in and I promise you it will be healed. And she has since told me that in that moment she's like, Oh no, did I hire the wrong coach? She made a second guess, but then she listened to her gut and decided to trust. And now she's able to think back to that memory of the birth of her child that was very traumatic and weighing heavy on her and causing significant emotions every single day and has peace, complete peace peace. And we never went back to that moment and rehashed it. We never went back and had her feel the depths of the pain that came up from it. Instead, what I did, what we did is I reflected back to her light, reminded her actually how to stand in her light and how to choose the light when the darkness comes forward. And in turn, her standing in the light in the present moment shined light to the past and light to the future. That is what we're seeking. We are not here to suffer. We are not here to cause intentional pain to ourselves. We are here to experience what occurs because reality is we're in this illusion right now. There is going to be experiences that can be seen as dark and painful. But it is up to us to choose what belief system we view that from. And if we choose to view that from the belief system of the ego, then we're going into the dark nights of the soul. We're going down into the dark, painful places of separation and hurt. But if we choose the script of the Holy Spirit, the belief system of the Holy Spirit, or our highest self, we will stand in the light. We may feel pain for a brief moment, but then we will choose different. We will remind ourselves that we are dreaming this. We will remind ourselves that we are pure love. And this experience that is trying to come in and confuse us and bring us back to the illusion is just that. It is an illusion. It is not happening. It never happened. It never will happen. Oh, I'm very passionate about this because I know I spent lots of time in dark nights of the soul that were not necessary. Possibly they were necessary for my journey. So I'm hopeful that if you watch this video, hopefully this saves you from a journey that's not meant to be a part of your journey. That reminds you that you are love. You are never... if. When we get to the place of enlightenment here in this illusion, which I, my goal is this lifetime, if not this lifetime, the next, there will be a period where I do not experience pain. Jesus didn't when he was nailed to the cross. He was not like, oh, this is a dark night of the soul I need to go through to be resurrected. He was like, I have already overcome this shit. And I do not feel it because I do not go with the ego belief system. I go with the Holy Spirit's belief system, which is full love, no pain, no separation. 
Remember that. Remember that. Jesus, I believe, and I don't quote me because I don't know the Bible by quotes, but I believe at one point when they were nailing him to the cross or putting the thorn thing on his head, thorn crown, sorry, thing, please don't get offended, he looked at the guy that was doing this and smiled. When, if he would have chosen a dark night of the soul, he would have been in so much freaking pain. He would have been in pain and misery and separation and the realization that he was dying and Mary was there watching him and all of his friends and he was leaving this and this is a horrible place, but this is necessary for me to rise above. But instead he knew he had already risen above and that he didn't have to experience it in that way. And I'm here to tell you, you choose your path, that is fine, but you do not ever again have to experience a dark night of the soul to achieve enlightenment. In fact, when you are choosing a dark night of the soul, that is not going to get you into an enlightenment. I hope this removes some opportunities for pain and separation in your life when they pop up and you remind yourself that I can choose the Holy Spirit. I can choose my highest self. I can choose love. I can choose not to follow your script ego that you are presenting to me right now and saves you from pain because pain sucks. But the reality is we aren't meant to feel pain. Pain is not a part of our truth and neither is separation and neither is suffering. I would love to have more conversation around this because it's a real thing right now. People are going off to retreats to be brought to the darkness, to feel the pain, to release the pain. Um, And I, I really believe that was true and I believe it can, but it's not necessary. Why would you sit and suffer in pain to get to the light? You're in the light. I'm here to tell you, you are in the light. And if you choose, you can always stay in the light and never allow the suffering or pain to come. It's as simple as a holy instant. I'm so grateful for you listening to your highest self because let's face it, it wasn't easy to get here, but it sure was simple. It was one decision to choose your highest self. So I love you tons. And as always, until next time, remember you are worth it. 